three reasons why I do not fear a gold or silver confiscation. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I can't tell you how appreciative I am that you spend the time to watch my videos. I hope you enjoy them, get some entertainment from them, maybe get some education from them too. Leave a comment down below as to how you liked this video. All right, the gold confiscation. Do I fear it? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't fear a, a, a 1933 style gold confiscation or a 1934 silver confiscation. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. I don't. I don't think it's going to happen. I know many of you out there do. I get comments like this or, or you know, emails and such that say that you are afraid that the government is going to take our gold and silver again. Some of you in other countries may fear a 1959 or 1966 or 1976 or 1978 confiscation. I don't know if those dates ring any bells with you people in other nations. I bet you uh, do. Many of you probably recognize those dates. Uh, and I'm going to get into them a little bit later in the video. But no, I don't think it's going to happen again. I do think there is one way our government could easily suck in our precious metals wealth, like a, like a Hoover vacuum cleaner. I'm going to get to that at the very end of this video. I'm going to tell you what I think you can do to reduce that likelihood. All right, but I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> what I'm going to do briefly, and I mean briefly, is to discuss the American confiscations. Again, I say confiscations, two, two, right? That's plural, gold and silver. And then after that, I'm gonna give you my three reasons why I don't fear it. I, I think it's extremely unlikely to happen again. Now, right away, I'm probably triggering a bunch of people. They're like, Yankee, the government, I, do you trust them? No. I don't. <laughs> I think they could pass any law and ban or make illegal anything. I mean, shoot, they could they could ban duct tape, make that illegal. All right, they could they could um, uh, pass legislation outlawing uh, reality TV. <laughs> Not that that would be a huge loss, but you, you get my point, right? <laughs> okay, we live here in the United States in a representative republic. Okay, it's not a direct democracy. We hire our lawmakers, in a sense, to legislate for us. The government can do anything they want. All right, so I've talked enough civics. The point is they could do it, but I don't think they will do it. So let's, let's go back really quick, 1933. Under the uh, a pretext of a national emergency... President Franklin Roosevelt issued Executive Order 6102. That order forced every U.S. citizen to sell their gold at a price of $20.67 an ounce. That's approximately $376 today. A crazy, artificially low official price. Okay. The president's order also made it illegal to have this stuff, this yellow metal. And there were stiff penalties too. You could get up to a $10,000 fine. I mean, that that's actually like $180,000 today. That was a lot of money back then. And you could get thrown in prison for 10 years. Now, there were some exclusions for numismatic collectors, you know, but that that exception was actually really difficult to prove. I mean, if you, if you had some numismatic coins, they could still call you a bullion collector and say, nope, you got you to gotta bring it in. Now, let's be clear here. The government didn't go to your house and kick your door in and say, where's your gold? Give us your gold. You know, they didn't stop you on the street and frisk you. That, that wasn't going on, all right? It was up to the people to bring in their gold. And people did, okay? A lot didn't. Um, that's just the way it rolled back then. Prosecution, you know, that $10,000 fine, 10 years in prison, that rarely happened. And when it did, it was pretty much for you know, symbolic reasons. Okay, so why? Why did they do it? 
why did President Roosevelt sign Executive Order 6102? Well, you got to understand what it was like back then. We were under a gold standard. And under a gold standard, the amount of dollars outstanding by the federal government was directly linked to the amount of gold in our banking system. The total amount of dollars couldn't be expanded, couldn't be printed without an equivalent addition to the gold reserves. In other words, the Fed was you know, handcuffed when it came to uh, inflating our money supply. Oh, the days when that was the case, right? <laughs> there, there's no limit now. <laughs> Brittany Presco, burr, right? <laughs> okay, to be clear, the term confiscation, okay, that word, technically means uh, uh, a seizure without any form of compensation. And yes, the government did compensate people who turned in their gold. However, the government pretty much stole the wealth of the American people when they did this. And that is what many of you are afraid our federal government will do again. You know, if it becomes desperate enough, it's going to do another gold confiscation. President Roosevelt also confiscated silver, even though it wasn't uh, a legal tender at the time. It's Executive Order 6814. If you haven't heard about it, Google it. I'm not going to talk about it here. Now, I'm going to get into the reasons why I really don't think it's likely to happen again. But right before I do, I want to say something for my uh, international viewers. I know you've been uh, you know, uh, subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. I don't want to forget about you when I talk about the good old USA here. But this confiscation thing is not an American phenomenon. Okay? It is international in scope. Australia. They had their gold confiscation back in 1959. Our friends across the pond, Great Britain, you guys had a ban on gold in 1966. That lasted like 13 years. <laughs> Even earlier than that, Mussolini tried to uh, encourage uh, Italians to uh, donate their gold voluntarily, right? <laughs> For the fatherland, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, Hitler during Nazi Germany. He pulled his confiscation scheme in 1939 when he tried to uh, confiscate gold from Czechoslovakia. And the Dutch, boy, back in 1978 with your gold confiscation. So it's kind of clear to see why people might fear another gold or silver confiscation, right? Well, a lot of the times you hear people uh, say uh, another gold confiscation could occur, they're trying to sell you something, okay? They're trying to sell you, you know, either high premium numismatic coins and scare you into not stacking bullion, you know, the cheaper stuff. Uh, maybe they're trying to, you know, sell you expensive gold and silver jewelry because, oh my word, yeah, that, that will never be confiscated, right? So buy all this expensive stuff. Or, or maybe... It's a service, like a vaulting service, or you know, we'll, we'll we'll protect your gold and silver. You know, you will you'll be able to store it outside the country. Well, I'm going to talk about that later on. But these are the the fear mongering that I think can occur that 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 prey upon people's fears of another gold confiscation. And I'm going to tell you right now the three reasons why I don't think it's going to happen. The first reason, it's not relevant. Okay, let's let's remember what it was like back in 33. People were walking around with gold in their pockets. They had this stuff. It was not rare to see actual gold coins, pre-33 gold coins, great, beautiful coins to stack and collect. That was the coinage. That was the money back then. Today, uh-uh. <laughs> nobody walks around with gold in their pockets or silver for that matter. Back then, gold backed our currency. Today, no way. We have fiat currency, federal reserve notes. They're not gold certificates anymore. They're, they're not uh, receipts or claims on gold stored somewhere. Back then, this was seen as a monetary metal. Okay. See, guys, we stackers have a mindset or a, a, a worldview that is completely counter-cultural today. We've lost the mindset that gold and silver are real money. 
you know, silver seen primarily as an industrial metal. Gold is, you know, something that, you know, big you know, central banks stack, right? It wasn't the case back in 1933. And I think this irrelevancy, if you will, with precious metals is the very first reason why I think it is extremely unlikely it's going to happen again. It's it seen just like an, a, another commodity uh, by you know those on Capitol Hill and the Fed. They don't see it as money. It's just not relevant anymore. That's the first reason. Second reason, it's not practical to have a gold or silver confiscation since it's not a you know a, a monetary metal uh, or at least seen as a monetary metal uh, by the masses. I got to be careful here because sometimes I trigger people when I say, you know, it's not a monetary metal. They go, Yankee, yes, it is. <laughs> I understand, but it's not seen that way now. It's not seen as a, a uh, transactional means of exchange to buy goods and services. Remember, when they had to turn in their gold back in 33, where did they go? They, they brought it back into the bank. Can you imagine bringing your gold to the bank? That's a logistical nightmare. It's not something that they know how to exchange with. What are they going to, you know, put an executive order together saying you have to find a local coin shop and convert it? It's just logistically crazy for them to put in another 1933 style confiscation order. What has happened since 1933? Well, a a lot of things have happened since 1933. But the thing I'm thinking about is the information revolution. Think of technology. Think of the tech industry. I mean, that has driven the industrial uses of gold and silver to incredible heights. In fact, I mentioned that people don't walk around with gold in their pockets. Well, they actually do. It comes in the form of this, a cell phone. Do you realize how much gold and silver are in our technology like a cell phone? We have, on estimation, about a thousandth of a troy ounce of gold in this thing. And about a thousandth of an ounce of silver. So <laughs> we actually do walk around with it, but it's locked up in technology. Okay, We are using silver and gold, especially silver, up left and right in solar panels and medical instruments and TVs, uh, all kinds of technology. That's where our silver and gold is. How hard would it be to do a gold or silver confiscation and try to exclude all the areas that we rely on gold and silver today? They didn't have that back in 1933. I don't think it's practical to have a confiscation like they did many, many years ago. And the third reason why I think it's not going to happen, and this is a big one, is it's not necessary. Guys, there are dozens and dozens of ways for our government to steal our wealth. I mean, I'll just list a few of them. Uh, inflation, that's what they're doing now. They're inflating our money supply. They can inflate our money away. Make it useless. They, that, and, and think of inflation as a, uh, a tax on our future consumption. It steals our wealth. And speaking of taxes, yeah, that's a big way for the government to take our wealth. I think taxes are going to go way up, <laughs> way, way up, regardless of who wins this November. A bank confiscation. That can happen, or better known as a bank bail-in. Just ask Cyprus back in 2013. You know, that would be a lot easier than to do a gold and silver confiscation. See, the government wants to take our wealth, but they, they want to make it easy on themselves. They're looking at liquidity. Liquid savings are probably the most at-risk uh, asset for them to take. I mean, it's easy pickings for them to take what's in our bank or what's in our form. Okay. Let me give you an example. Let, let's say tomorrow uh, the government says, 10% uh, of all savings is government property. They call it a, an emergency tax. Job done. The only thing that has to happen is you know some small correction in the books at commercial banks and boom, they get their money. Uh, there is absolutely no further consequences beyond just taking from savers. And those are the same savers who have 
already had a hard time given the easy money policies of central banks all around the world. And, and let's say um, uh, the next day, the government uh, could change the Roth IRA tax rules. How about that? Yeah, all those, all those IRAs that we have, 401k Roths, all those are legislative rules and they can be changed just like that. Oh, but my earnings aren't taxable anymore. Oh, really? Suddenly they may be. And, and what about your mortgage? Now, I get people uh, emailing me saying, you know, Yankee, you're talking about the devaluation of currency. You know, that's good for those who, you know, have borrowed a lot of money, right? So maybe I should have like this big jumbo mortgage, right? Because it's all going to be inflated away, huh? That sounds like a good idea, right? Well, what if on the next day, the government announces that your mortgage is now indexed to inflation? Think about that. I mean, they do index, you know, like like Social Security payments to inflation, or at least they're supposed to. But what if they indexed your mortgage to inflation? In other words, oh yeah, you only owe this much, but since inflation has gone up this much, you you know, tied to inflation, you really owe this much now in your mortgage. So yes, could they confiscate? our gold and silver or make it mandatory that we turn it in at some ridiculously low price and make us sell it? Yes. But when something is not very relevant, practical, and necessary for the government to do it, I just doubt they will do it. But I do believe that they could tax windfall profits on gold and silver windfall profits. This this would make it much easier for them to accomplish something uh, similar to that 1933 heist. And there's precedence for this too. Back in 1980, a lot of you probably don't remember 1980, but Congress passed the Crude Oil Windfall Profit Tax Act, which taxed up to 70% of windfall profits of domestic oil producers. They were taxing people making a lot of money, okay, back in 1980. And if the price of gold and silver, or I should say when the price of gold and silver just go through the roof, I wouldn't be surprised if Congress passes a similar act. They could levy a tax of 70% again, or maybe 80 or 90% or whatever, right? That could happen. And that concerns me. So while I don't think there's going to be a 1933 or 1934 gold or silver type confiscation, what should we do anyways to protect ourselves, especially from that windfall profit tax that might occur? Well, three quick things. One, stay anonymous. Okay, do your best to shield your identity as it relates to precious metals, including online. That's one of the reasons why I am Yankee stacking. I, I'm anonymous on my channel uh, and I wanna keep it that way. So try to stay anonymous with your purchases. It, purchase them with cash. You know, get, get, use cash, not credit cards. Try to avoid buying through, you know, the, the big bullion dealers if you can, bring cash to your local coin shop, use cash while you can, while we still have cash to use, use it to buy your gold and silver. And third, this is something I have looked into, although I don't think I'm ready to do it because I want to hold my precious metals in my hands. But one of the things that I've been you know, researching is the potential for vaulting this stuff overseas, getting it out of the country, getting it away from uh, possible regulatory acts. No guarantee they won't come after it regardless of where it is. In fact, I think California's wealth tax is going to be chasing people down regardless of what state they live in for a while. But, you know, it may be an option for you, uh, especially if, um, you know, you have a lot of it. So anyways, that's the three reasons why I don't think a gold or silver confiscation is likely. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure it's uh, prompted a lot of comments or questions. Make sure you put that right down there in the comments section below. I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching, and I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.